procedure itself is basically two to three shots on each side of the face, and uh, it takes you know less than a minute to to perform uh, with a very small needle, and uh, the effects start within a week or two, and they work for about three months. Dr. Bertoni, you spoke of environmental issues, Nebraska as possible causes of PD, water, et cetera. Yes, and it is stated sometimes that Nebraska is number one in this uh, tendency to have Parkinson's, but the studies are really not conclusive. Yes, there are things. There's something called rotenone that's put in ponds that kills fish. Um, there are similar uh, or the same chemical that has been shown in animal models to cause uh, something very much like Parkinson's disease. So we all know that if we take the wrong medications, or excuse me, not medications, some medications, by the way, make you look like you have Parkinson's disease. One of the problems we have is then we need to take that away and see if things improve. But yes, there are environmental things, whether Nebraska is worse than other places, we don't know, but it's something that we need the research dollars to answer. So we're looking, but we don't have all the answers yet. And that's why we have these symposiums. And, and suppo symposiums, and I wanna thank you guys all for making it possible. The next one, Jen, is there a back support product to help reduce the hunchback effect or forward flexed posture? Danish, on a DAT scan, what does abnormal mean on a DAT scan? So DAT scan binds to the part of the brain where dopamine is released. It binds to those endings of the nerve uh, in special receptors that are sensitive to dopamine. So if you lose those nerves, then you won't be able to bind and stay in the brain. There's no other reason to stay in the brain. Anyone can take this question. Uh, the effects of soda pop in Parkinson's versus drinking water uh, with Parkinson's. Dr. Bertoni? Or Jen? Jenna. Jenna. There we go. Sorry, Jen, I hadn't picked on you yet. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so does the Uh, they want some more education on the dopamine agonists as a class of medications.
Hmm. We all pick on him. It's not just me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so dopamine agonists are, so, you know, per Parkinson patients lack dopamine. And levodopa gets transformed inside the brain into dopamine. So basically, levodopa replaces the lost substance. A dopamine agonist is a substance that works in the same way as dopamine. It works in the same receptors and produces a similar outcome, but is not dopamine. You see the difference? So, um, so the, the dopamine agonists have, have, have been around for a long time, bromocrypting. Dr. Bertani has been involved in every single clinical trial of every single dopamine agonist that has been approved for Parkinson's disease, I think. Uh, yeah, he's saying yes, yeah. <laughs> so uh, he should be speaking. Um, so dopamine agonists, in general, are uh, a, a great drugs for Parkinson's disease. They tend to be on the mild, milder side. They are not as strong, not as potent as levodopa, because they are mimickers of dopamine, you know. So they are not as strong. However, they tend to have very significant side effects. The most important ones are uh, orthostatic hypotension, so uh, a, a drop on the blood pressure. Um, they tend to produce dyskinesias, the wiggly movements that we talked about, and that uh, they have been linked to produce dystonia. So patients that have dystonia, one of the things for us to look is to make sure that they are not taking dopamine agonists because it can be produced by them. And last but not least, dopamine agonists over the years have been linked to impulse control disorders. Impulse control disorders have been reporting up to 60% of patients taking dopamine agonists. So these are great drugs. We use them all the time. But we have to be very uh, cautious with their use because they can have uh, many side effects. Danish, Japan is currently using stem cell injections into the brain. Is it being done in the U.S.? If so, what is your opinion?
Vicki and Jenna, what are recommendations for unintentional weight loss? And also, does levodopa, carvedopa interact with protein? Like, yeah, unintentional weight loss. What's the, what's the definition of unintentional oh, weight yeah, loss? unintentional weight loss. So um, normally, like, someone will come to me and say, you know, obviously, I'm going to do weight changes, and they're losing weight without changing anything that they're doing. Um, sometimes that occurs where they're still eating the same, everything seems the same, they're just losing weight. Um, or unintentional weight loss can come from if people uh, have other issues going on that are affecting how much they eat, where their calorie intake protein and levodopa. Dr. Sire, um, are hot tubs recommended with Parkinson's disease and what about taking hot baths? So yeah, I talked about um, heat as a trigger for causing the orthostatic hypotension. So if it's not an issue, if you know that the blood pressure dropping is not an issue and you recently haven't adjusted medications or changed medications, um, something like that is fine. But it definitely is a trigger for um, dilating the blood vessels and taking blood away from the brain and so um, low blood pressure, a fall, the symptoms I talked about earlier could definitely occur if you are in a hot tub um, for a prolonged period of time. Diego, what causes dose failures? Mm. Mm. Dose failures, uh, you know, the most common cause of dose, dose failure is the gastroparesis, I believe. Uh, there are many reasons, but I'm going to discuss this first one because it's the most important one. So gastroparesis is a slowness of stomach emptying. When you, when you take your medication, it goes from the mouth through the esophagus into the stomach, and the stomach is this large bag that is a muscle, and that muscle is beating at a particular speed. In Parkinson's disease, it goes a lot slower. And if the medication doesn't leave the stomach and goes into the small bowel, it will never be absorbed. So what happens is that you take your medication and you wait and you wait and you wait and the pill is still you know, inside the stomach until it doesn't leave the stomach, it will never be absorbed and therefore you feel that you had a dose failure. You took a dose but it didn't work. There are other reasons, uh, for example, eating a, a highly proteinaceous food. Um, by the way, soy beans have a lot of protein too, so it's not just beef. You know, just, just saying out there that beef is not always the culprit. Um, so, uh, so you could have a highly proteinaceous uh, meal that would uh, lengthen the time of absorption of the medication and then you might not notice that the drug actually kicked in. So that's another reason for those failures. Uh, and there are many more, uh, including uh, the not so uncommon, oops, I forgot to take my pill, right? Uh, which, you know, which is, is uh, also a possibility. Dr. Hellman, how do you move forward with helping a patient when they won't admit they have the symptoms? This is something that um, needs to be tailored to the individual um, that you're working with, but a few general concepts that I think might be most beneficial. One, point out what you're noticing when you notice it. 
Um, if you see somebody struggling with something because of a tremor or, or trouble with dexterity, point it out and say, oh, I noticed that you're having some trouble with that. Did you notice that? Do you see, it seems to be taking you longer. If you try and wait and you notice these things and you don't say it in the moment, and then later you try to bring up everything you've noticed in the last few months, it's gonna be much more overwhelming and more difficult for you to um, approach that person as well. Whereas if you can point it out, when it's happening, it's a little bit harder for the person to deny. Um, they can still make excuses for what might be going on. But then um, kind of comes to the next point, be gentle but persistent. So if the first time you point it out, they brush it off, but you notice it again, point it out the next time and the next time. Again, gently, uh, kindly, um, and give them some time to kind of realize what's going on as well. Uh, denial is a very powerful thing. Um, Encourage them to uh, be evaluated and maybe start where they're most comfortable. So it might be harder to convince them to come to see one of us specialists first thing, but maybe start with your primary care doctor or, or their primary care doctor. Even when they're going in for their regular checkup, ask, ask if you can come and ask about these things that you've noticed. Or maybe you know, um, just encourage them to ask and, and see what the, the primary care physician says, although then you also have to rely on them and, and their um, willingness to, to have those things evaluated as well. Um, but those are some tips to kind of get the process started. Um, and again, kind of reading the, you know the person better than we do, so kind of, you know, reading and tailoring to what type of approach works best with that person. Um, but don't give up and don't also make it everything a very huge deal. Um, you know, can, giving it to them in pieces can sometimes be um, a little bit easier to digest over time and again be patient. Dr. Bertoni, have there been any studies on malnutrition, poor diet in childhood that contributes to Parkinson's disease that you're aware of? Danish, should I avoid electrical stimulation from a physical therapist if I have had DBS?
Uh, no, I, I, in general, so, you know, the, the type of stimulation that physical therapists use is to enhance the activation of muscles that are, that are weak and that need, need to be brought up. And that type of stimulation is performed with, with an electrical loop within the muscle that doesn't go, uh, you know, usually beyond the particular area, and it, and it is most commonly used in limbs and in, uh, you know, midline muscles. Uh, so as long as the two cables are far away from the battery and the loop is not going through the battery, then it tends to be safe. But the recommendation is for you to discuss this with the person uh, who's controlling your deep brain stimulator and with your therapist, and together they have to coordinate to make sure that it's safe for you. But I agree with Anish. Another option is to go to the hotline and get more information there. But I would start with your DBS person and your therapist coordinating together so that uh, they know what they're doing. Diego, uh, what do you recommend for stiff, painful muscles in the affected leg of a Parkinson disease patient? Affected? Leg. Leg. You know, my, my first recommendation for any stiffness in Parkinson's disease is exercise, physical activity, physical and occupational therapy. 100% of the time, that is the most important of all solutions. It has very few side effects. Um, it's not that I'm the best example of uh, exercise, but <laughs> I'm a firm believer in it, okay? Um, but seriously, uh, if you're having cramping, if you're having stiffness in any body part, really stretching, stretching can make such a huge difference on your quality of life. Um, so I would encourage everybody to start there. When that's not enough, then you need to start looking for other treatment options, and the next layer of options would be medications by mouth. And you have medications by mouth that are specific for Parkinson's, and then medication by mouth that are specific for stiffness. Um, so, you know, your physicians can use any of those to uh, try to help you out. Uh, and then when those don't work, then we, we, we have to start thinking about those things that I talked uh, about, which is, you know, the, the more invasive option. Um, another question is, are there currently any programs for patients with Lewy body dementia versus Parkinson's with Lewy body? Um, approach me afterwards and I will give you the contact information for the Lewy body support group in Omaha. Dr. Bertoni, I have been told I have something called PSP. Can you tell me anything about PSP? We could do a whole lecture on PSP, couldn't we? Thank you. 
that kind of 